Do you remember this circuit here? Two MEX-667 5 modules attached to thermocouples and an Arduino reading the data and yeah, uh, sending it out via the USB port to the computer. And one of these MEX modules galvanically isolated from the rest via a digital isolator. Today I want to talk about the costs of that digital isolation, not in terms of parts, but in terms of additional current and power requirements. In effect, this video is an addendum to three of my previous videos. I mean, of course, first, Arduino, thermocouples, Mac 6675 and SPI. Yeah card link. Then isolated unregulated DC-DC converters. Yeah, I've used last time this totally unsuitable <laughs> one watt type. Also card link. And finally galvanic isolation of SPI devices where I introduced that digital isolator. Also card link. And we will dive deep this time. We will not be satisfied with what's written in, sorry, out of focus, the data sheets of the parts regarding their current consumption or just measuring it with a multimeter. We will get the oscilloscope out and really have a detailed look what's happening on these five volt rails over time. Enjoy. Just a short recap what we have or will have on the breadboard. We have one MAC6675 module connected via SPI to our Arduino. Up here we are not really interested in the Arduino. And we have a second MAC6675 module also connected via the SPI bus to the Arduino but with a digital isolator in between. So that Arduino is galvanically isolated from the rest of the circuit. And of course we have the Arduino 5 volt rail and ground and we have on our isolated side a 5 volt isolated and a ground isolated. And that is provided by, well, who would guess, an isolated DC-DC converter which simply takes the 5 volts from the Arduino power rail and creates an isolated 5 volt rail here for this isolated side of the circuit. If you want to know in detail how that whole circuit works and the Arduino software uh, it needs, well, see the three aforementioned videos. Now, First, I want to have a look at the data sheets of that digital isolator, the MEX6675, and two kinds of DC-DC converters. I mean, last time I used these one watt jobbies, which will completely uh, yeah, oversized for this task, and so the efficiency was <clears throat> not nil, but very low. Now I have these 100 milliwatt types, which should be much more efficient at providing that little current we actually need here. Second, we will have a look with the oscilloscope at the actual power consumption of the different parts, depending on what they are doing. Are they actually pulled? Yeah, data pulled by the SPI bus from the Arduino or are they just in standby? There will be a difference. I predict a huge difference. And yeah, we'll need that data actually to know <laughs> what to do with our DC-DC converter. And of course we will measure the efficiency of uh, yeah, the two types of DC-DC converters themselves in the different operation states. Let's get started. So, the data sheets. 
For the MAX6675, we find a supply current value of typical 0.7 and maximum 1.5 milliamps. No minimum supply current is provided. And we have a maximum supply voltage that's also important of 5.5 volts. For our digital isolator, the SI8631AB, we get four sets of values regarding the supply current. And the reason being, of course, this is a two-part chip. I mean, these parts are supposed to be completely isolated. So we have a supply current here, VDD2, and a supply current here, VDD1. In addition, they make the distinction between different states. Yeah, what are the input signals? But yeah, to summarize it for VDD1, we have typical 1.3 milliamps and max 5.9 milliamps. And on the VDD2 side, 1.7 typical max 4.5 milliamps. And that thing also works at 5 volts plus minus 10%, so maximum 5.5 volts. We'll have a look at the data sheets of our isolated DC-DC converters later on when we got a little bit more data and know what these thingies have to provide. We start the measurements with the MAX6675 and please note I'm using my oscilloscope probe without the attached clip and the ground strap directly on the board because otherwise it will get oh, noisy as hell. Uh, let me try to signal capture that and we have a detailed look. Bottom is zero milliamps and top of the screen would be one milliamps. And I'm covering here over the whole screen size about 300 milliseconds. And you see there is a phase where there's just noise. That is when the max is doing nothing. And then you have these peaky things here. That's when the max is actually transmitting data on the SPI bus and pulling its output pin high and low. And bottom line, yeah, here, yeah, the bottom of the noise floor is about 0.4 milliamps. The top of the noise floor 0.6 milliamps and we have these peaks at 0.7 milliamps. Hmm. And if you wonder how I actually measured the current with an oscilloscope on the 5 volt pin here, yeah, I simply inserted a 100 ohm resistor that will give me a voltage drop of 100 millivolts at 1 milliamps. And yeah, I put the oscilloscope probe around that resistor and measured the voltage drop. That's all. Just as a sanity check, I replaced the resistor here with this digital multimeter, which is obviously measuring the current, and it's 0.5 milliamps. This is really just to yeah, give me a second opinion and to see if I might have completely messed up the oscilloscope measurements. Now let's measure both sides of the digital isolator and I will just show you, well, the single capture shot in close up of my measurements and the results on the digital multimeter to speed things up. Now that's the max side of the digital isolator and I changed the scale here. So yeah, full scale is two milliamps. So here at the noise floor we are at 1.2, 1.4, 1 1.6 milliamps and top of the noise 1.8 milliamps and we still have also that spike. I have no idea where that is coming from in the circuit but uh, yeah, we uh, continue to ignore that. And the digital multimeter gives us, yeah, about 1.7 milliamps. 
So, the digital isolator side towards the Arduino is also very quiet. We still have this nasty spike from wherever. And yeah, full scale at the top is about 5 milliamps. So we are, yeah, and the noise is now very small in regards to our signal. Um, yeah, let's say 2.5 milliamps. We are pretty much in the middle. And the DMM basically says the same, 2.5 milliamps. And just to be complete, I also measured the combined current consumption of the MAX and the digital isolator on the MAX side. And we still have here a full scale of 5 milliamps. So we are here at the noise floor at 2 milliamps and well at the top at approximately 2.5 milliamps and we see the noise here on the VCC line from the max again. And the multimeter concurs with our measurements at 2.2 milliamps. So what does it all mean? We still have here our typical and maximum values from our data sheet and that's what we measured. And if we sum up our measurements, yeah, we see they were correct, yeah, they're working out. So our max minimum on the oscilloscope of 0.4 milliamps, our digital isolator on the max side 1.6 milliamps, yeah, gives us 2.0 milliamps summing up and that's what we measured. Maximum values 0.7 plus 1.8 makes 2.5, yeah, summing up and measured. So we are okay here. Digital multimeter 0.5 milliamps plus 1.7 milliamps gives us 2.2 milliamps. Okay, so this is also consistent. And for now we can forget about the Arduino side of the digital isolator. It's simply 2.5 milliamps. Yeah, which is somewhere between the typical value and the maximum value from the data sheets. Now, significant here, our minimum value of 2.0 milliamps is certainly 20% below the typical value we get from the data sheets that will come in play when we look at the DC-DC converters. And the maximum value 2.5 milliamps is just a little bit over the typical value. But for dimensioning the DC-DC converters, we should really take this value here as minimum 2.0 and the maximum value, not what we measured, but from the data sheets, because you never know into which operating conditions, yeah, temperature-wise or yeah, digital-wise, uh, you will go. Just a short remark why we saw the current changing on the supply of the MAX 6675, but not on the digital isolator. So all these breakout boards I'm using on the breadboard, they have decoupling capacitors on them for the supply voltage. However, uh, yeah, I made that breakout board for the digital isolator myself and I dimensioned them according to the data sheet of the digital isolator, so 10 nano on each side. I don't know what the value of this shiny breakout board is for the decoupling uh, capacitor. It's an SMD jobby, it's very small, it might be too small. And that is probably the reason that we saw this digital ripple here on the supply line when measuring. You could of course increase the value of that capacitor, put in a bigger one, but uh, for the moment I don't care. The isolated unregulated DC-DC converters. Let's start with the data sheet of the one watt type that I used in the previous videos. There were already cards and yeah, links below. So this thing, one watt can of course provide 200 milliamps. And if we go further, also significant in the data sheet, the minimum load is 0%. But 
there is a node and that node is important. Operation below 10% load will not harm the converter, the converter will survive it, but specifications may not be met. That is, everything you're supplying with the converter might die. And further in the datasheet we find that nice diagram which gives you the output voltage in correlation to the load. And it's only from 10% to 100% and as long as we're here between 10 and 100% our output voltage is plus 10% worst case to minus 5% worst case. So 5.5 volts to 4.75 volts which is okay because you remember all our parts they can work with 5.5 volts. However, this curve here might not continue in a linear fashion but uh, something like that. So if you end up at 0% your output voltage might be 6 volt, 6.5 volt or 7 volts and that would definitely kill our max and our digital isolator. So we need to keep the minimum load at 10% or 20 milliamps, which is a whole lot of wasted power. And we also have this nice diagram efficiency versus load. And you can see at 10% which is a minimum load, <laughs> our efficiency is 50%. That is to get our minimum of 20 milliamps out, we have to put in 40 milliamps. And even worse, we have also a crescent current of yeah, maximum 30 milliamps. That is 40 milliamps plus 30 milliamps. So we would expect worst case 70 milliamps to get into that thing so we can get out our 2.0 to 2.5 milliamps. So this <laughs> converter is definitely not suitable for the job but uh, that's what I had the last time around so let's put that in and measure it. I added the unregulated isolated DC-DC converter to the board with some additional parts here and we will have a look at the circuit now. And note the voltage on the isolated side is 4.8 volts which is completely okay. Here's our DC-DC converter with a rather large 10 microfarad input cap. Yeah that value comes from the data sheet from IMF measurements and I added yeah all by myself an output capacitor of 100 nanofarads and this 270 ohm resistor which should give us at 5.5 volts these additional 80 milliamps. We need to get that thing into at least 10% output current, that is a total of 20 milliamps. And now I'm measuring the current going into the DC-DC converter. I won't even bother to use the scope because all you will see is switching noise, lots of switching noise. That's what the uh, well big electrolytic at the input is for, the 10 microfarads to buffer that a little bit. But uh, yeah, well, the multimeter is showing about, yeah, 42 milliamps. Finally, the moment of truth, a more suitable 100 milliwatt DC to DC converter. I hadn't these when I did the first three videos uh, because 100 milliwatt converters are really hard to come about. But uh, in the end I found these via a German distributor 
and the company that is uh, yeah manufacturing them GapTech seems to be relatively new at least here in the German market anyway uh, they have all the requisite proof stamps and unlike uh, anything sourced from AliExpress or Banggood and the likes you can uh, trust them so they should really keep you safe up to 1000 volts DC anyway let's put that on the breadboard and test it. So here it is. It's obviously much smaller but uh, yeah it seems to do the job without the load resistor and uh, is providing 4.76 so 4.8 volts to my circuit which is great. The question now is uh, how much current does it require to do that? And making some predictions uh, how much it will consume uh, is basically um, out of the question because the data sheet of these things is abysmal. So yeah, it's basically two pages. That's it. There's nothing about minimum load. There's nothing about uh, quintessence current. There is nothing about efficiency. There's just the typical output load versus output voltage diagram here, which is exactly the same uh, like for the other DC-DC converter plus 10% worst case when you are running it at 10% load, 2 milliamps, which we do, and uh, minus 7.5% worst case if you run it at 100% load. So uh, yeah, Let's just go forth with the measurements. And as you can see, yeah, now measuring the current, it draws about, yeah, let's say 11 milliamps. Much better, but is it good? And before we look at the numbers, please note the load resistor is now, of course, gone from the breadboard because 2 milliamps, yeah, our minimum current is exactly 10% load for that 100 milliwatt DC DC converter. I also resized uh, both input and output capacitor here because, um, yeah, it's nothing in the data sheet itself, but in the data sheet of the next bigger model, yeah, 250 milliwatts, they mentioned some. Uh, capacitor sizes for input and output and I just scaled them down by a factor of 2.5. So yeah, uh, the circuit itself should be fine. Now to the numbers. And they are <laughs> uh, range from bad to abysmal. So uh, with the one watt type and remember we are really wasting 18 milliamps only to keep that thing happy, which in its minimal load range of 10%, we needed 42 milliamps, okay, 42 milliamps. That is about an efficiency of 6%, just considering our maximum current, for, uh, which we really need, 2.5 milliamps, okay. With the 100 milliwatt converter, we are fearing a lot better but it's still not good. So we were drawing 11 milliamps and yeah, 2.5 divided by 11 gives you roughly an efficiency of 23%. And please just compare that to this number where I calculated the efficiency for the complete load and the one watt converter. That is our load uh, resistor plus our two milliamps we really need, 20 milliamps, then our efficiency for the one watt at 10% load is 48%, while our efficiency for the 100 milliwatt type at 10% load is 23%. So <clears throat> we are running here in a scaling problem and this scaling problem is uh, the same for transformers, for DC-DC uh, converters, for uh, electric motors, for generators. The smaller the thingies go, the lower is their efficiency. 
Yeah, you can make a big uh, electro motor for an electric car or even bigger electric motors or generators in uh, power stations with efficiencies of 90% or higher. But if things get smaller, your efficiency suffers tremendously. And you see that uh, our DC-DC converter is yeah, uh, smaller by a factor of 10 and our efficiency went down by a factor of about two. Yeah, that's the curse of <laughs> small scale circuitry. Yeah, you suffer efficiency losses. Nothing you can do about that, but still better than this solution here. And that's it. The costs <laughs> of digital isolation. And they are quite high. I mean, uh, even a yeah, optimized solution, uh, we need about uh, order of magnitude 10 times more current than just our max chip here would consume. Or in other words, uh, if that would be a battery powered device, you only have a tenth of battery lifetime. So yeah, really high costs. I should mention that there are digital isolators available that have the DC-DC converter integrated. And uh, yeah, the DC-DC converters in those things, they range between 50 and 150 milliwatts. So uh, yeah, that would be suitable for our application. Uh, the problem is there are many more digital isolators without the DC-DC converter built in available and you can basically find a, a model for each and every application you can think of while there are very few with an integrated DC-DC converter and you might have trouble finding one suitable for your application in regards to the digital channels, the ability to disable outputs here yeah, on the Arduino side, on the bus side, and so on. And such an integrated solution might even be more expensive. I mean, that's a cheap part. The digital isolator is a cheap part. The chips, the digital isolators with integrated DC-DC converter, they are quite expensive. And with that, I say, of course, bye.